Hi, it's Linda, and I'm going to make turkey meatballs for a turkey meatball stroganoff that I'm making for dinner. And so I don't have to repeat my recipes over and over again because I like turkey meatballs, but in other recipes. So I'm going to, um, I'll combine all of it together for one for the turkey meatball stroganoff, but I'm gonna do a separate one to show you just how to make just regular turkey meatballs and then you could add whatever flavorings you want whatever sauces you want for other recipes so I hope this helps okay we're gonna get started here with um, I'm gonna, 16 ounces of ground turkey and try to get the 99% fat free so it's zero points so I, it's a little bit more expensive but it's worth it to me it is and we have green onions and we're gonna have a little bit of olive oil for sauteing a little bit of Greek yogurt, some panko breadcrumbs, some salt and pepper, and a little water. And so I'm gonna get started. I'll show you in just a minute how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna start the turkey meatballs. Uh, this is an Instant Pot recipe. So we're, I've turned the Instant Pot onto saute, because we're gonna saute the uh, turkey meatballs in here. And so we want to drizzle a little bit of olive oil on the bottom. Actually, uh, what I want to do is spray it too first. I like to spray a little nonstick. So let me get some nonstick spray. Okay, I'm going to spray my Instant Pot with some nonstick spray. Makes cleanup so much easier. Okay, this is with a coconut nonstick. Now I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil in it. About a teaspoon, tablespoon, just a tiny bit so we can um, saute the meatballs in there. So while that's heating up, I'm gonna try to quickly put these meatballs together. Okay, we got one half a cup of the panko breadcrumbs. And then I've got a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. It's going in. And then we're going to do two teaspoons of um, chopped onions. I'm just gonna chop them up ahead of time, but they're, it doesn't take that long just to chop up some green onions. It looks like it's about two tablespoons. You can eye it or you can put it in the sink you want to measure it. And uh, my little dog is going nuts here. He hears me chopping and he thinks it's time to have some fruit because he's on doggy WW and lost weight. So he hears me chopping up stuff. He thinks I'm going to cut him an apple, but no, I'm not. Okay, so I've got the green onions in there. And the next thing we're going to add is 16 ounces of ground turkey. And this is the 99% fat free that I mentioned earlier. So stick that in there. Now I'm going to add Greek yogurt non-fat Greek yogurt, two tablespoons. I already pre-measured in here. If it's a little more, it's okay. It's zero points, so hey. And so I'm gonna put that in here. And then I'm gonna add a third of a cup of water. And then I'm gonna start mixing all of this together. And here's the third of a cup of water. I'm gonna mix this all together with my hands. I just washed them really good. And then I have a little thing here of water. Because thing of, with meatballs, if you keep your hands wet, it's easier to roll them. So I'm going to pause this right now, or actually going to go to the fast forward while I put the rest of this together. Okay, I've got it all mixed together. That's what it looks like. Now I'm going to roll like one to two inch size balls, little balls. And I'm going to set them aside here, and then they're going to go in the Instant Pot. So I'm going to fast forward while I roll. Okay, I finished rolling all the meatballs. Pretty good size meatballs, and there's 16 of them here. Wow. Okay, so I've been heating up a uh, little bit of olive oil in the Instant Pot on saute. I'm gonna drop these in here. I'm gonna go cook these for like two minutes. I'll cook it like for a minute, roll them over, 
kind of roll them while they're cooking, get them all done. But it should only take two, three minutes to get these all finished. And then I'll show you what they look like. Okay, they've been cooking for like two minutes. And uh, you kind of got to take the spoon and go around it and, because they stick real easy. You just kind of loosen them up. But whatever sticks on here is going to taste really good in the sauce when we get done here. Um, when I go to make stroganoff with it. So I'm kind of turning it around as it's the parts are brown that's underneath. So it looks like about two minutes on this side. And then we'll see how long it takes. But they're browning up really good. Okay, they've been cooking as you can hear it. And um, because they are fat free, you know, they don't have a lot of fat in them, so it's really hard to cook them up. But um, it looks like they're coming out really good. And uh, I've got a lot of stuff stuck on the bottom of the Instant Pot, but it's going to taste good in the stroganoff sauce I'm going to be making. I had one or two of these kind of fall apart, which is okay because they'll taste good in the, the sauce. So here's what they look like. They're, I don't know if you can see this pretty good or not, but they're browning up pretty good. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this saute off because I'm going to go into the next step, step in a minute. There we go. Okay. Looks like the meatballs are all done. This would be good for any kind of recipe where you need them. Um, one thing I would suggest if I did it again is not put so many in here. Maybe do like half and um, because it was really crowded in there so it made it hard stirring around. You need to stir it gently, like turn these over often um, to keep them or underneath it to keep it from sticking. And I had so many in here as you can see there wasn't much room to do this, and I think that's why a couple of them fell apart a little bit, but that's okay because they're going to taste real good in the stroganoff. But in case you're using the meatballs for something else, it's just maybe a little tip for the future. And here's the meatballs all cooked, and I hope you enjoy. And if you like these, of course, you know, just um, share with others. And I hope you enjoy all the videos that I've been making. And I'm going to be going on now with the stroganoff sauce and I'm going to be putting these in. So I'm going to combine it all to one for the stroganoff, but I'm wanting to do these separate in case you want to make the turkey meatballs for a different recipe, you know, like with spaghetti or, or spaghetti squash, which is what I do too. Okay, now I'm going to make the stroganoff sauce. Oh, my Instant Pot's coming on. I want it to come on to saute because I'm going to saute the onions and the mushrooms. So the ingredients in this is going to be, you know, um, <clears throat> Greek yogurt, some minced garlic. Uh, this is a beef broth. We're going to use like a half of an onion. Some I can't not cannot believe it, I can't believe it's not butter light. Uh, some chopped mushrooms and salt and pepper. And that's what's going to go into the sauce. And then and as, after it cooks down, which I'll show you, we'll add the meatballs and then we'll add the noodles. But this is for the stroganoff sauce. Okay, now I'm going to continue on making this the stroganoff. Um, I cleaned out my crock pot, crock pot, my instant pot, because when I made the turkey meatballs in it, uh, because they don't have much fat in it, they stuck. And uh, I didn't want it causing this stuff to stick. So, maybe it's because I used coconut spray instead of the regular Pam, I don't know, but I think it's because turkey, and there's not enough fat in it. So, I've got this on saute, and then I'm gonna add around approximately two tablespoons, or more, whatever we need of, um, I can't believe it's not butter, light, just so we can saute the onions. And this will go in next. And I'm going to saute them for about a minute or two. It says two minutes, but I'm not sure. This thing cooks awfully fast. So I'm get this moving around. Okay, I'm going to add. This is a, a half of, of uh, a medium size to a large size onion. So it's probably like three quarters of a cup. 
onion, that sauteing. Looking good. After this sautés down a little bit, then I'm going to add uh, the mushrooms. I'll be right back. Okay, the onions are sautéing really good. They're all shiny, glistening. So now I'm going to add the chopped, or they're sliced mushrooms, and I just sliced them up a little bit more. We like big, we like nice sized pieces of mushrooms. I don't like huge, but I don't like them really tiny either. So chopped up sliced mushrooms, however you want to call it. And then I'm also going to add the salt and pepper, which is in here. And this is one teaspoon of pepper and a half a teaspoon of salt. You don't have to put that much pepper. You can do a half, but um, I love having pepper and I'd rather put more pepper in than salt. And that flavors it really good. Okay. Now I'm adding two tablespoons of minced garlic or you can do a couple of cloves and miss it yourself. I love buying the minced garlic. As you can see, that great big one. Somebody asked me in one of the videos, oh my gosh, I've never seen minced garlic in such a big container. I said, yep, yeah, that's Costco for you. Okay, it says to cook for like one minute. I, when I was researching these, I kind of put different recipes together and tweaked them. You know to how what I like so some of the, ins the instructions I'm keeping because I know they're probably good so it says one minute with the garlic and then I'm going to add the broth okay I'm going to add a can of the beef broth mm -hmm. smelling good and now I'm gonna I think it says, do I cook it for one more minute? <clears throat> I'm going to cancel it now. And now I'm going to put the lid on it. Okay, put the lid on the Instant Pot. Got it set here in the middle on pressure. And now it says to set it manually for 15 minutes. So we're going to go manual. And I'm just showing you this, I know some people are new to the Instant Pot, so go 15, and now it's gonna cook. It'll come to pressure, probably takes, oh, between five minutes or so for the pressure to build, and then it'll be 15 minutes of cooking, and then we'll do a quick release and add the meatballs. We add the Greek yogurt, and then um, the meatballs and the noodles. Come in the other, I Okay, I said I'm gonna uh, cook this on pressure for 15 minutes. And the recipe I was co copying this from and tweaking, you know, I had a couple different ones. The reason it called for 15 minutes because it had uh, steak strips in it. And that, I was wondering why would I wanna cook just this juice for 15 minutes? But it was because that would cook the steak strips. So I'm only cooking this for, for, for five instead. Actually, I think it went a little over. It only took three minutes to come to pressure and then cook it like three to five minutes on pressure. Now, I know some of you are new to an Instant Pot and you're kind of a little scared of it. Um, I, I just, I'm gonna cancel this right now. I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna do a quick release. I'm gonna show you this just real quick and then I'll go off so everybody doesn't have to hear it hiss. But it's, just take a wooden spoon and then just hit it and let it, uh, the pressure go down to the little uh, red thing, <laughs> the little red uh, pressure button drops, and then you can open it. I'll let you know how long it takes. And here we go. There goes the pressure. I'll let you know how long it takes. Okay, it took less than a minute, maybe about one minute, for the pressure to go down by a quick release. The little red button's down, so now I can open it very carefully. You wanna open it away from you when you open it so the steam can kind of release, unless you wanna get a nice sun in there. <laughs> okay, and I'll be right back. Okay, looks really yummy. Now I'm gonna put it on saute, which is like cooking it on top of the stove. What's so nice about Instant Pot, you don't have to keep changing pans to go back and do something. 
So it's just gonna heat the Instant Pot up without putting any pressure because I wanna add, these are the turkey meatballs that I made earlier. I'm gonna add that and the noodles. But before we do that, I'm gonna add a half a cup of non-fat Greek plain yogurt. Do this, put it right here in with the hot. <clears throat> I'm going to stir this together and it's cooking and now it's giving it a creamy look that I wanted. I'm going to make a nice salad to go with this tonight. Uh, it's only four points for the turkey meatballs with the noodles and that's with the sauce so pretty good and we can have a salad with it. It's cooking up. I'll right back. Okay, I'm going to thicken it up just a little bit. That's why I had this out, just in case, because I, I like it a little more thicker and probably a little bit more, um, the, add a little more almond milk with it, just to give it the more, more saucy, because it might be okay. It just doesn't look like too much to me. And this is zero point, so it's not going to affect the recipe. You want to make sure anytime you use cornstarch that you mix it in cold liquid, usually cold water. So I'm like a heaping teaspoon here. Um, and it dissolves pretty good. You don't ever want to put it in with hot because then it'll clump all over and it'll ruin your dish. So you want to mix this here as soon as I get this all mixed together. Okay, it's all done and our dinner's ready. I made a little salad first. We always like to have a nice salad to uh, go with our dinners as much as possible. One other thing I added on the, on the recipe, whenever I made stroganoff before, I always, most of your stroganoff recipes, um, uh, call for a little bit of nutmeg. So I added a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. I will put this in the recipe, which will be located uh, below the description of the video. So now we're gonna, I'm just gonna serve it. And look, here's the noodles. Look how good those turned out. Really hearty. The noodles are two points. Um, I'm afraid this is gonna be too much food, so we'll see. Well, if it is, we're gonna have it for dinner tomorrow. So this might end up being like three points maybe for this, for the noodles, because, uh, anyway, there's the noodles. Keep them on the grill. And now I'm gonna spoon the stroganoff, the meatballs. Oh my gosh, I'll just do one so you can see it and then I'll go on. Here's the meatballs, and it made 16 of them. This is only two points for the meatballs and with the stroganoff sauce. So this whole dish is like five points, probably at the most. And this is what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and dish my husband's, and I'll come back and I'll say a few final words. I'm getting the last bit of the stroganoff sauce. Look how thick and hearty that is. Oh, it's gonna be so filling, it's gonna be so good. I don't even know if we can eat all this. Even if we do, like I say, five points maybe. Not even that. If you can have a dinner that's under 10 points, that's really yummy and hearty like this, it's like, wow. It's like hitting the jackpot. So that's our dinner for tonight is turkey meatball stroganoff, and then of course we're gonna have a salad with it. I hope you um, get a chance to try this recipe and I hope it inspired you. And on with the new year, 2020, to be the best that we can be, the healthiest we can be. And I've lost 80 pounds on WW. And continue to uh, track everything that I eat so good. I mean, where do you get this? Not with Nutrisystem, not with the others. I've, I've tried all of them. This is so cool. I can cook for my family. We can have yummy meals, healthier meals. So I hope you enjoy this. If you do, please share my channel with others. I just want to inspire other people. I really don't make anything off of it right now. Maybe someday, but if not, that's okay. I hope you enjoy this and God bless you. See you on the next video. Bye. Hi, it's Linda. I'm going to make some homemade noodles. I've made this before for another recipe and now I'm going to do another different kind of recipe today. And so I thought, you know what, I should just do one separate video on how to make 
homemade noodles that are only two points per serving and they're really good. My mom used to make homemade noodles so it brings back so many memories. These taste so good and the points are so much less than what you buy in the store and they're really not that hard to make. So let's get started. Um, I cut the recipe in half from what I usually do uh, and the recipe will be posted in the bottom of my de de description of the YouTube. But um, since it's just my husband and I, I had too many noodles last time. So what we're going to use is uh, just regular flour, not the self-rising, regular flour. We're going to have a little bit of salt, a little bit of baking powder, one egg, and a tablespoon of regular milk. Or you can use almond milk, whatever, but you know what? One tablespoon is zero points. So use whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and use that. All right, and we're going to go ahead. I'm going to uh, get started with this. The first thing we're going to do, um, it, it helps if you have a food processor because it'll just mix this dough up so easy. Uh, if not, you know, then if you have a KitchenAid mixer with the dough thing on it, which I do have, but I hardly ever get it out anymore. It's so big. Um, that helps. If not, you kind of really get some exercise in by trying to make the dough yourself. Okay, I put a half a cup of the flour into my food processor. So let me move this side. I've got flour all over my board. Very important that you do this. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is add, um, let me get my little thing here and I'll be right back. My okay, I just had to look at my recipe again since I cut it in half. I don't want to give you uh, the wrong ingredients. So we're going to do a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder, not baking so uh, soda, but baking powder. We're going to do a half a teaspoon of salt. Just want to get this, I should have opened this, but half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. We've got all of that in there. It's because you always want to mix your kind of mix your dry ingredients a little a little bit first. Just kind of get that mixed in. Now we're going to add one egg. And then we're going to add a tablespoon of milk. Now this is kind of a guideline. If it's uh, too thick, then we'll add a little bit more. We'll see what the consistency is like once uh, the food processor mixes it up. So I'm going to kind of set this aside. I'm going to go ahead and turn my food processor on so you don't have to listen to it. And I'll be right back. Okay, I just finished uh, using the food processor. Um, I turned it on about 15-20 seconds, then I stopped it, scraped the sides down a little bit in the corners to get all the particles, and then I pulsed it, uh, turned it on for about 30 more seconds just to get every bit out. So it makes a nice little round ball, and you need to have a little roller. You can use a big rolling pin, I just prefer these little ones. I used the big one the last time I had to stop and find this little one because this is so much easier. I use this for making the two point dough pizza also. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put this in here and I'll be right back. Okay, now let the fun begin. It's like playing Play-Doh with my grandkids. Uh, you wanna make sure you flour everything really good. Your fingers, this thing. You're gonna get flour on yourself also. You know what, I usually would wear a um, apron, but I got flour on the apron. So I'm just keeping it real, and I'm just gonna roll it out with my shirt on, and then I'll dust myself off. If it does come off, I'll just put another shirt on before I go shopping. Okay, so actually the one tablespoon of milk turned out perfect. This is a nice size roll. And now you just wanna put it in there, and now we're gonna thin it out a little bit. So I think I'll pause it and uh, do it fast forward. Okay, I used my little rolling pin as you can see in the little fast forward. You want to just keep turning it around, kind of get it into a kind of a rectangle. You know, just keep doing it thin. It's pretty easy, actually. And um, you've got it really spread out. That one ball spread out way 
a lot right here. So this is great. So I think I'll stop right here and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a pizza cutter and we're gonna slice it. We'll slice it in some oblong slices. They don't have to be, whoo, that one just came right off. It's pretty cool. Um, they don't have to be perfect size slices. Uh, it's actually, you know, it's kind of good being homemade if they're not. I'm gonna hold on to that while I do it because what's to lift? Uh, my mama's never was, per, you know, the perfect sizes. That's one of the things I really like about this. You can really tell they're homemade. And so I do a baby about a half an inch, three quarters of an inch wide. You could do them thicker or thinner. I like them a little bit thicker. You've got to remember when you cook them, they're going to uh, swell up a little bit. So don't get them too thick. And um, like I said, this is only going to be two points per serving. And so I'm going to continue cutting this down this way. And then when I get done, we're going to cut, I'm going to cut it the other way. Actually, I'm almost done. So I'm just going to keep you in suspense right now. I finish this and I'm sure I've got more flour on me. <laughs> Wouldn't even be surprised if it's uh, on the floor, but it's okay. All right. So now we've got this. Now I'm going to cut it this way. Depend upon how long you like your noodles. I like mine about like this, so they cook in good. So probably about three inches. I'm going to just go like that. Another one. And some maybe a little bit longer. And then what you're going to do, these will need to dry. One recipe says you can use them right away. Others say let, it, let them dry on the mat for like two hours. And my mama always used to do that, so I like to uh, kind of follow that. Just kind of pull these apart. We used to, my mama used to have a whole bunch and she'd make them and then she'd cover it with a little towel, a little kitchen towel, and we'd sneak in there and we'd grab little pieces off the edge and eat them. They were so good. Um, so it, doing this kind of brings back some sweet memories. Uh, my mama's in heaven, I miss her a lot, but there's still a lot of things about her that I carry on. And um, so you're gonna pull these all apart and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. Okay, I've been at the store and trying to let these dry out while I went shopping for some other ingredients for another recipe I'm doing. Anyway, um, these noodles have been drying out. They're pretty good. What you want to do is after about a half hour, an hour, you know, it's just optional. You don't have to, but I do, is spread them around. Sometimes they'll want to stick. I love this little uh, pastry mats. I use this for all of my uh, pastry items that I make and especially for the two-point dough that I use for like the pizzas and stuff. It's really good. Anyway, so uh, what you can do after this, you can add this. Um, if you're making a homemade soup, you can add it to the soup just like I have in my, I have a recipe. Uh, I think it's for turkey pot pie soup with uh, noodles. I can't remember, I'm getting so many recipes on YouTube now, so cool. Um, you can add it directly to that or you know, to any hot liquid you're making soup or you can boil them ahead of time uh, and add them to other recipes like stroganoff and stuff, which is what I'm gonna be doing also later today. So that's a little tip. So they're pretty well all ready to go for any recipe that you might wanna use uh, the noodles for. They're two points per serving. All of this makes um, four servings, is from what I can tell it said, depending upon how many noodles that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and boil these and then I um, will come back and show you what they look like after they've been boiled. And, uh, okay. Okay, I finished up the egg noodles. I wanted you to see them before I end up putting them in the stroganoff I'm gonna make now. But this is, uh, like I said, it was a half a recipe, which is plenty for my husband and I. Only two points each and um, it cooked up real good. I put them, uh, the noodles in boiling water and cooked them for about seven minutes, I think, right around there, because you want them maybe a little al dente. You don't want to cook them until they're all soggy, because then when you go to put them in a sauce or 
or whatever you want it to absorb the sauce flavor and you don't want to end up being mushy so you want to cook them like five to seven minutes uh, it looks like it made oh let's see at least two two and a half cups of noodles and see what i was saying when when you cut them remember how thin they were that they're going to plump up when you uh cook them and so this is how big they are now now they taste really good so i hope you enjoy the egg noodle recipe that you can use in other uh, recipes that i'll be posting and if you do please share this with others and i hope you have a wonderful and blessed day bye